Hello, welcome to another episode of Management Accounting. I hope you all understand basics of cost because today we will be going deeper into the costing systems of manufacturing companies. Remember, it is very important for managers to know what it costs them to make a product because the information is useful in cost planning and control, in inventory valuation, and also in financial statements preparation. A costing system enables managers to tra track costs of any product. We will look at two most popular costing systems, job order costing and process costing. But before we dig deeper, it is important to review some cost terms that we will be using in this chapter. We have seen them before in chapter 2. Let us make sure that you have a very good grasp of the terminology. A cost object is anything for which a cost measurement is desired. We will talk about a job or a product as being the cost object in this chapter. A cost pool is a collection of all indirect costs for a job. Cost allocation is a process of linking indirect costs to the cost object. Remember, we have to pull costs together first before we can start assigning or allocating them. Cost allocation process also needs a cost allocation base, also called a cost driver, to assign costs to the cost object. An allocation base or a cost driver typically drives the cost up or down. Typical cost drivers are direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, etc. Let us now make sure that we know what direct and indirect costs are. Direct costs can be directly traced to a job. Typically, material and labor are direct costs. Indirect costs are all other costs that are used in manufacturing but cannot be directly traced to the job. Typically, indirect material, indirect labor, and all manufacturing overheads are indirect costs. Let us recap manufacturing costs too. Remember, manufacturing costs are all costs incurred in making the product. Typically, manufacturing costs include direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Direct material and labor are direct costs, and manufacturing overhead costs are indirect costs. The items that are included in manufacturing overheads may be rent of the factory, cleaning supplies purchased for the factory, salaries of janitor, depreciation, and maintenance, etc. Two types of cost systems are commonly used in companies depending on the nature of their product. A company would use a job order costing system when each job is made to order. The unique nature of each order requires maintaining separate cost records for each job. For example, a construction company may be building a bridge and a school at the same time, but they have to keep all material and labor costs in separate pools because they need to know exactly what the bridge costs or what the school costs. A company making movies or bridal dresses would also have to keep track of costs for each cost object separately. A process costing system on the other hand is used by companies that do mass production of a single product and the units are indistinguishable from any other unit. A company that makes shampoo or cold drinks or candy or paper or paint makes millions of identical units of the same product and needs to know only the average cost of each unit rather than the exact cost of each particular piece. In this chapter, we will be focusing on job costing, that is costing system for all companies that need to track cost for each job separately. This is an easy chapter if you are comfortable with the flow of inventory through TA comms that we saw in chapter 2. Let us take a second look at it quickly. We will start building on it soon. You have seen this slide in chapter 2 before. Let us make sure you know what is going on. In a manufacturing company, raw materials are purchased first. So, our first account is a material inventory account in which purchases come on the debit side and add to the beginning inventory. Whatever is ordered onto the factory floor is taken out of materials account and transferred into work in process account. The company then adds labor and other manufacturing costs 
to the work in process account to try to complete the production. Whatever is complete is transferred out of this account into the finished goods account and the partially complete stuff stays as ending inventory. Finally, goods made from finished goods inventory account, I'm sorry, finally, goods move from finished goods inventory account when they are sold. Otherwise, they just stay there as ending inventory. We will focus on the work in process account further to understand the job costing system. So, what we have on this slide is the crux of the whole chapter basically. So, please don't move forward unless you get this really well. First, look at the familiar setup we have. There are three accounts at the top. Material inventory account, work in process account and finished goods account, same as before. What we have added here are two additional accounts, direct labor and manufacturing overheads account or MOH account. Direct labor or DL is a simple account since it cannot store any labor or la all labor is transferred to work in process account. This account has no beginning or ending inventory. Next and the very important addition is manufacturing overhead account. Let's look at what is happening in there carefully. First look at the two red arrows one bringing in direct, indirect material from materials into manufacturing overhead and the second one bringing indirect labor from the labor account. Why is that? Because indirect material and indirect labor belong in manufacturing overhead account. If we spend anything on indirect material or indirect labor, we take it out of our material and labor account and transfer it into manufacturing overhead account. Then we add other manufacturing costs that may be incurred while producing the good. Examples could be utilities, repairs, insurance, taxes, etc. So here is the most crucial point to understand about manufacturing overhead account. Notice that what is going into the debit side of this account is what we are actually spending on cost throughout the year. But if we have started a job that finishes well before the year ends, we will not know what is the total on the debit side of manufacturing overhead, overhead account since that number is not known until the last day of the year. Let us take an example. Suppose a hospital treats a patient for a minor surgery and lets him go after a week of hospital stay. If the patient is leaving, say on 20th January, what bill should we give him? It would be easy to pull together his direct costs of medicines, surgeons fees and food etc. But how to charge him for the hospital rent, insurance, taxes, repairs etc. Since these are monthly or yearly costs, how much each patient is charged should depend on how many total patients will come during the year. Then we should divide the total manufacturing overheads by number of patients to get the per patient cost. But we do not know how many patients will come when our patient is leaving and still has to be given a bill. The point is that actual manufacturing overhead costs cannot be charged to jobs or products or patients or clients as the case may be because actual manufacturing overhead costs are not known until the end of the year. So we use estimated numbers to apply costs to job or patients throughout the year. Notice that manufacturing overhead account has an applied number going into the work in process debit side. We never talked about that when we talked about cost flow in chapter 2. We simply talked about manufacturing overhead. Now we are talking about applied manufacturing overhead which is actually what goes into the work in process account. Once again, manufacturing overhead has actual manufacturing overhead costs on the debit side and applied manufacturing overhead on the credit side. Next, we will learn how to apply manufacturing overhead to costs or jobs or patients. So since it is not possible to allocate actual manufacturing overheads to jobs until the end of the year, we will use a trick to get around this problem. We will try to use previous year's numbers to arrive at the best estimate of what the actual manufacturing overhead amount is likely to be. Then we look for the best cost driver or allocation base to assign these estimated costs to the jobs. An allocated base is usually number of direct labor hours used 
or something else that affects the level of manufacturing cost. Allocation base will typically be given in a, manu in a job costing problem to you. So now we have a formula for calculating the rate at which we will apply manufacturing overhead to each job. The formula divides budgeted or estimated or predetermined overhead costs. There are several names available by the estimated allocation base. Please note that we used budgeted numbers both at the top and at the bottom to calculate our budgeted rate. No actual numbers here at all. Next, we try to apply manufacturing overhead to any job by multiplying the rate we just calculated by actual consumption of cost allocation base by our job of interest. This is the first time we are using an actual number. It is best to nail this with an example. So here we are given estimated manufacturing overheads for our Murdoch company. The allocation base of direct labor hours is also given. Finally, we are given the estimated quantity of allocation base, which is equal to 75,000 direct labor hours. In order to find the rate, you simply divide the estimated manufacturing overhead dollar amount by the estimated direct labor hours. Our answer would be $4 for each direct labor hour used by any job. Was that okay? Let's look at one more. Next, we ask how this rate will be used to apply manufacturing overheads to a job or a patient or a client as the case may be. All we need to do is to know the actual direct labor hours used by the cost object whose cost we are trying to determine. So in this example, we need to apply overheads to job 101 where actual direct labor hours used are 2000. So at the rate of $4 per direct labor hour, we will apply 4 times 2000 equal to 8000 to job 101. I hope that makes it clear.